after filming this video, guys, and really looking at the specs and the details of this truck, I can't believe how damn good it is. It's absolutely a game changer in the pickup truck ute segment market. The fastest growing segment worldwide in terms of vehicles is pickup trucks, is utes. And this vehicle is so much better than I initially thought. Fastest growing car brand worldwide this year, Geely. And it's no surprise. If you consider the fact that Geely's brands, Zika, Polestar, Volvo, Lincoln Co are going global. Well, now you can add another one to this mix, Radar. Probably called the Radara in Australia, but anyway, Radar's electric pickup truck. Now, Geely sells. Like I said, they're covering all these segments with those brands. They do not have a pickup truck though, but here it is. They've officially said, this is a global vehicle. It's already being produced for right-hand drive car markets. It's gonna be sold in many different countries. I'll list all those countries in the video. Hello, my friends. Great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Julie, I mean, holy smokes. Who would have thought this would have been happening, right? Fastest growing brand in the world, period, is Zika. Parent company, Geely, who were the fastest growing conglomerate in the world this year. Pretty scary, actually, when you think about how, how quickly they're growing. Fortunately for us Australian pickup truck fans, guys, so Thais, Australians, Americans, they're the three countries worldwide that I know of where pickup trucks just dominate car sales. And so Geely's gone, well, great will take sales in those places because, I mean, for example, in America, you guys have, you got a few different models to choose from, electric pickup trucks. In outside of America, there's nothing. There's almost nothing. So this will be one of the first fully electric pickup trucks worldwide that people can actually afford. And that is built from the ground up to be an EV. The Radar RD6 um, will be called uh, exported potentially under the name Radara. And Geely said this, with a more competitive new product and service system, Radar Auto will accelerate its expansion into overseas markets, continuously expanding to markets in Asia Pacific, Central Asia, Thailand, Middle East, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Central and South America, and other countries and regions, and perfecting its global layout. So you can kind of see here, guys, there was no mention here of Europe or, or, you know, European Union countries anyway, where those taxes, massive taxes apply on Geely vehicles, or the United States. Everywhere else though, pretty much everywhere else was mentioned. So what that means is if you live in one of those places, if you live in the Asia Pacific, if you live in Central Asia, Thailand, Middle East, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Central and South America, and other countries and regions potentially where there are no taxes on Geely vehicles, then there's a good chance you'll be able to buy one of these radar electric pickup trucks pretty soon. And that's amazing, that's fantastic, because these things are, well, they're already very affordable in China. They're quite efficient too. The reason is it's more of a car-like pickup truck, which I think will appeal to a lot of people. Most people don't actually take their trucks off-road, right? The company has not released any further information on the actual timing of the launch of the ID6, but we do know that they plan on building them in Thailand. So what do we know about this vehicle? Well, for one, it is actually built on Geely's Sustainable Experience Architecture or SEA platform called the Multiplex Attached Platform. This features a McPherson strut front and multi-link independent rear suspension. So very different suspension setup to a normal pickup truck. Probably as a result, you're not gonna plan on carrying you know, huge workloads in the back of this tray but it means much more comfortable ride. As you can see, the interior, it looks like, it kind of looks more like a luxury car to me, the interior of this vehicle. Very different in terms of the style in the inside versus traditional pickup trucks, which look a bit more old school, agrarian, you know, kind of maybe more rugged, but also simple as well. So that's a big advantage here. But remember, this vehicle uses a structural battery pack and it's actually really impressive. I've been to the factory, I've seen the platform here, the SEA uh, architecture actually being built in the factory using, and also in addition to that, some of the some of the stuff that Julia are using here, some of the advanced technology they're using in their uh, production site is actually quite imp incredible. SEA underpins a whole range of cars, including Volvo vehicles, Polestar, Zika, Lincoln Co. It contrasts 
the RD6 with electric utes like the LDV ET60. Very different. It uses a traditional body on frame ute platform. To be honest, almost all vehicles worldwide use a traditional body on frame. This is not using that. It's not the traditional pickup truck. So yeah, more car-like, like I said, but a lot of people this will appeal to. The RD6 comes with a single motor rear wheel drive. In addition, it also comes now with a dual motor all wheel drive configuration as well. So what is the power you're gonna get? Well, the rear wheel drive version has 200 kilowatt and 385 newton meters of torque. That's actually quite a lot of power when you consider it's an electric motor and it has instant torque. All that 385 newton meters is available instantly. So that would be more than enough power, I think, for most people. But rear wheel drive, a lot of pickup truck owners want all wheel drive. The all wheel drive model, two motors, a total of 315 kilowatt and 594 newton meters of torque. So 600 newton meters of torque, about what well, about 470 horsepower so 315 kilowatt that's a lot of power guys that's a very that's going to be a very fast pickup truck probably as fast as a cyber truck in the dual motor version as well so i'm going to i'm going to estimate based on the times we've seen from china it'll be the same motors which means it does 0 to 100 kilometers an hour or 0 to 60, 62 miles an hour in 4.5 seconds that's that makes it the fastest pickup truck Australia has ever seen by a very wide margin. To compare this guys, BOED Shark, the plug-in hybrid, it'll do zero to 100 or zero to 62 miles an hour in about 5.8 seconds. So pretty big difference. The single motor version, it does zero to 100 in 6.9 seconds. So that's quite fast as well. Now, speaking of performance, what about battery sizes and range? Okay. The Battery packs, they're not that big because like I said, it's more of a car-like vehicle, it's more efficient and it's actually quite a lot more efficient than other pickup trucks worldwide. Battery pack, the cheapest battery pack you can get, the smallest battery pack, this comes in the single motor version only, 63 kilowatt hour LFP, lithium ion phosphate. Now, this is actually a really good battery. It's Geely's new Aegis short blade battery. It has a higher energy density than anything coming from Catal or BYD. 192 watt hours per kilogram and it also is rated to do about a million miles that battery plus it has the ability to fast charge at 550 kilowatt and it has complete protection for thermal runaway in other words you crash this vehicle there's almost zero chance of the battery actually setting a light and burning itself so that's an amazing battery pack 63 kilowatt hour pack now that pack gives the vehicle 385 kilometers of range you can get a bigger pack though. The 86 kilowatt hour pack is the next step up. That's a ternary battery, a lithium battery, I believe an NCM battery, so nickel, cobalt, manganese, lithium based battery. That will give you 517 kilometers of range. So that's a pretty good range I'd say. I think most people would say, yeah, that's enough. The all wheel drive version. The base all wheel drive comes with a 73 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate, Geely Aegis short blade battery called the golden battery in China. That's, like I said, amazing. And that gives you 460 kilometers of range. If you get the 86 kilowatt hour battery pack, it has 520 kilometers of range, which is, um, I'd say, more than enough. Now, these range figures, are, I believe, are CLTC. So probably reduce them by about 10%. That would mean, then, the longer range versions of the Geely Radar RD6 are going to probably have around 460, 465 kilometers of range. Is that enough for you? I'd say most people will find that to be enough, especially considering the charging speeds will be quite fast for this vehicle. They haven't been confirmed yet, but I suspect they'll be upwards of 250 kilowatt. Payload. Payloads are shockingly good. I mean, okay, single motor version, payload 775 kilograms. So that's what, 1600 pounds? Towing, 2500 kilograms. Now, here's the thing. The all-wheel drive version, different, different matter. In fact, the all-wheel drive version has a better payload than some pickup trucks built on a ladder frame chassis. 815 to 865 kilogram payload. So that's like a 2,000 pound payload. That's amazing for a vehicle like this. It's more like a car. 3,000 kilograms of towing. So towing is about 6,500 pounds for the dual motor version, all-wheel drive. I can see massive demand coming, guys, for this vehicle because realistically, 
the all wheel drive version of this truck with 3000 kilograms towing, you know, payload of 865 kilograms, drives like a normal car, has double wishbone sus rear suspension. It's gonna feel like no pickup truck you've ever driven. That's just a fact. I mean, without driving, you can clearly see that it, that's how it's gonna be, right? Based on the information that we have. In addition, the performance is mental. Plus, if you look at the price of these vehicles in China, they're not that expensive. As far as I can tell, the all wheel drive version in China is around about 40,000 US dollars. I mean, if they come in at that price outside of China, do you will have enough demand to sell these for 10, you know, enough demand in a month to sell these for 10 years? It's gonna be insane. So how actual, what's the weight of them? Well, the curb weight is insanely light. I mean, these electric trucks, right, you think electric vehicles are heavier than, than internal combustion, but they're lighter than any pickup truck. Any dual cab pickup truck, they are the lightest of any in the world. Guys, I've gone in through and checked every model I can find. I cannot find a pickup truck in the world, a dual cab, right, that weighs the same as these or less. 2,065 kilograms, that's so light. I mean, the average pickup truck weight is about 2,400. So guys, Americans, that's around about 4,400 pounds, insane. In addition, they have 220 millimeters of ground clearance. So the ground clearance is not amazing, but it's actually pretty respectable, decent. I think they look pretty good too. The RD6 is the similar size to a Nissan Navara, a little bit, a little bit smaller, a couple of percent smaller than a Toyota Hilux or a Ford Ranger. Length, 5,260 millimeters long with 1,900 millimeters wide. Height, 1,865 millimeters. Wheelbase is 3.1 meters or 3,120 millimeters. The tub size, the tub size is actually pretty good for a car this size, for a truck this size. 1,525 millimeters long. So it's 1.5 meter long tub. That is competitive with other pickup trucks that are currently really popular outside of China. Not in America, of course, but I'm talking dual cabs similar to us in size to a, a Ford Ranger or a Toyota Hilux. Now there's some other huge benefits of this truck that you guys need to know about. Vehicle to load. It has vehicle to load a maximum output of 15 kilowatt from the charging port. So you can send 15 kilowatt of power out from this truck to other devices, to other trucks, to work sites, to whatever. That's a huge, huge advantage compared to internal combustion pickup trucks or utes. Six kilowatt comes from the discharge panel in the tub alone. So the power point in the tub sends out six kilowatt. That's, that's massive. And 2.2 kilowatt from the panel in the 70 liter storage cavity under the bonnet. So the front boot has a 70 liter front, pretty small front, but it does have a power point there that sends out 2.2 kilowatt, then six kilowatt from the back. Maximum total power output that you can send out of this car, 15 kilowatt. And that's better than 99% of other EVs on the market. Depending on the variant, you get a, what, well, to be honest, most variants, I think all variants that are gonna go overseas will have a 14.6 inch screen. So about a similar size screen to what you get in a Tesla Model 3, plus you get a 10.2 inch digital instrument cluster right in front of the driver. Now, Geely say the RD6 has level two plus autonomous driving capability. Don't know exactly what that means, but it does have active safety technology, including adaptive cruise control, autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, rear cross traffic assist, and traffic sign recognition. Other equipment you can get, it comes with matrix LED headlights, a panoramic sunroof, uh, power adjustable heated and ventilated front seats. A lot of these things you just don't get on utes and pickup trucks. Uh, the RD6, who will sell it here in Australia? Well, I believe that Geely will have their own radar or Ridara brand here, like they've done with uh, Zika, Volvo, Polestar. It'll be another brand, its own sub brand. So its own brand under the uh, under the Geely umbrella, essentially. Guys, this might be the first electric pickup truck to be sold worldwide and to be sold here in Australia. I am um, I'm excited for it. Now there are a couple of others. LDV have a brand new. Uh, electric truck, which I think looks actually slightly better than this. That's meant to be coming next year as well. JAC have an electric pickup truck, which doesn't look as good as these two. But next year, the big two, I think we're gonna see electric pickup trucks for the global car market, uh, outside of American vehicles, of course, is the new LDV electric pickup truck, which is a completely new ground up EV platform. 
And of course, LDV is owned by parent company Sake Motors, who own MG. So basically, it'll be called MG in Thailand. Uh, that's how they brand it there. And of course, this, the Radar RD6. Then in 2026, I believe that's when we'll probably see a new version of the BYD Shark, which will be EV only. Or an EV, EV version. They'll probably have an EV version and a plug-in hybrid version in 2026, based on what I'm hearing. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think.